Lots of talk about midfielders this week. Maddo, Sterling, Foden. What about Jared Bowen? Right, guys, welcome back. This is the Above Average FPL podcast. My name's Adam, and as always, joined by Baker. How are you, mate? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. Another team selection, another Friday deadline. Yeah, hopefully we'll get these out of the way once the international break is done. We're back onto Saturday deadline, so you'll have a bit more time to digest this information from us, and we get a bit more time to have a little tinker with our teams, because now we're well past the point of rolling transfers, I think. Um, there are a few people with luxury transfers I've seen around, and on the flip side of it, loads of people are hitting that wild card button as well. I've seen it all over the place. How are you? How are you shaping up for this week? Like just straight off the bat. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm. I think I'm okay. Uh, I have actually. I think a lot of people have. I think a lot of people are really reticent to take hits um, early on. Like I feel like. I've seen quite a lot of wild card drafts out there that probably are minus four or minus eight are there. And I think everyone's really scared this early of doing like a minus eight. Um, it's weird because and... there's been some big numbers. I mean, and there's been some big numbers from t- from people. Like you think Bumo 16 pointer, Sterling 17, uh, 19 pointer. You know, there's, there's big numbers out there. Um, I mean, you know, pass points and all this bollocks, but you know, if those kind of returns come back come back for you and you manage to get the right player in like you make up the you make up the hit straight away yeah it feels like it's like a weird one where once you've pressed the wild card button you can just be a little bit more extravagant almost type thing like i, I thought about it this week you know maybe i dump one of my man united midfielders and do a minus four and then you're like god once i build it in that's a minus four to do it i really don't like it but if i was wild card in it I definitely wouldn't have two Man United midfielders. So it is, um, it, yeah, it's definitely tough. I'm not, I'm not seeing hardly anyone, you know, prepared to take big hits regularly. Um, I found our friends FML, I found, you know, Walsh really refreshing, you know, these these first uh, few weeks in the, just playing the game, not influenced that much by the social media side of it. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it is tough though to take a hit just before international break because so much happens I hate it. as well, isn't it? I I absolutely hate it. I mean, that's something that it's weird. It's something that one of my you know, one of my old mini league rivals from um, from my old work. He always used to, and he's he, don't get me, he's a great manager actually, really good. And I I don't think I ever really understood how deep into it he was, and he was probably like well into scout forums and stuff before you know it was cool for people to do that, or even cool for me to look at it or whatever. But he always was he was he was adamant he would carry two transfers into an international international break almost every single time. He'd be like, nah, the information from international break is better than than actually only having one transfer. Because there's always one injury you need to move on, and then there's always someone else that crops up um uh, that that you might think you need for the next few weeks. And he'd at, at worst, you know, he'd have one transfer, he'd never make a hit, never ever take a hit before an international break. Yeah. Very often roll a transfer. I don't think we're going to have that luxury this time around. I think there's a few people like with keeper issues. So if you, you know, if you're sitting on like a luxury, like people would more than likely trans change a keeper out. And, you know, you asked me on Sunday, would I go pick for to Flecken? And I said, no. And actually the answer is yes. If I had that luxury to be fair. If you had the luxury. Yeah. But um, yeah, it is. I, I, I get it. I get it. If you can do it, but, and I could do it. Like like Matoma is probably the guy that I'm looking to move out when we talk about our teams. Um, and it's still a really good fixture. But boy, there's so many good fixtures for midfielders. You've just mentioned them straight off it, you know, is and there's only so many you can have, isn't it? If you look at it, if you look at most teams, if you were a Salah team, um then you probably didn't have two Man United, which if you've come off it, you've probably got a good chance of getting to many of the the ones that are being looked at this week. So, you know, obviously Sterling and Madison are the most transferred in guys. Yeah. Bumo's massively well owned yeah. um already in it. Foden was charged last week, but not so much this week. But it's still, you know, if you haven't got Foden this week, you'll still be thinking, oh God, that could be a bit icky. 
watching um yeah watching City play this weekend. And then you've got Bowen, who's got one, you know, fantastic fixture, and it's Friday night, so you get a bit of fun. Um, hardly anyone's got Bowen unless I'm on wild card. Um, then you come the other four. Most people can get to two. And that's probably it, because a lot of people have got W United and, and Saka. Yeah. Um, and therefore, they've got to get rid of one if they want that third. So most people are going to have two. And it's which two you have, because you want them all. Like, it's difficult, but you can't you can't have more. I'm always just going to keep facing into it and pick the battles. But, boy, it's tough. Yeah. I don't, do you know what? Do you not feel it's even tougher because of, um, because it's so early in the season? Like, we don't know. You know, my decision is is Madison or Sterling. Um, would I be surprised if Chelsea won five nil? I wouldn't be surprised. Would I be surprised if Forrest got something out of that game? I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Mm. Um, and then with Tottenham. I feel like there's probably a better chance that we get something out of that game, but there's a lesser chance that we win five nil. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> um, fair. and um, and it's it, it could all go wrong either way. Um, it, it it's not easy calls. Yeah, it's really I think, not. I think because of the last couple of years, I think there's a lot more people that are looking at points over value and i think that's also the way the game set up this year because everyone's so goddamn cheap like this time last year we're looking at trying look we're trying to get points don't get me wrong but we're also not veering too far from the template and we're you know mm. we're building up for these big doubles and blanks and everything that's going to happen game weeks 20 onwards we're, we're just building towards that we need 104 million we need 105 million around that time so you have to start early you do you just do and you, it doesn't appear to be there this season in that you don't really need all the money. Um, you know, there are going to be obviously some significant fixture swings for Newcastle and Villa and Liverpool coming up and even City going the other way. But, you know, we're not talking about getting premium, premium guys in, you know, in these, in these swings. So the money is just there to be, to be spread around. And it means actually, yeah. I think there's a lot more I still think there's some diversity in teams. I still think there's a, there's a kind of oh, there's template, loads. but there's loads of diversity in teams right now, which yeah, is really yeah. cool, actually. It's good. I mean, it's cool, actually, even on, and some people hate this, but on Twitter, like, there normally you wait until the end of the night when some rando has absolutely smashed it with a ridiculous captain on Matt Cash, for example, triple captain Matt Cash. You, we're not seeing that on, what we're seeing on Twitter instead is we're seeing, actually, people have got all these players that haul. like. Every single per every single player that's hauled, someone's got them, and there's a few. Mm. It's not like one or two. It's like a dozen. It's twenty. It, you know, everyone's catching these hauls, which means they haven't got other players agreed, and you're not ca nobody's catching them all. So it makes it really cool. Actually, I'm enjoying it, that. It, there's going to be some swings this weekend, definitely. A lot like you just can't sit with those midfielders. You just can't see a world where there's not a swing. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, if, if you're the person that gets both of yours, hammer, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. If if you're unlucky that you've got to, because they're all great fixtures for great players this weekend. We're not talking about bad assets here. They're all really good assets. Um, and so it, it, it hurts. I actually, um, there's been obviously so much talk about prices because prices have been wild. Um well, I saw someone saying that like people have been talking about not about information over price. If you were on Havertz and you didn't go to Sterling on Saturday, 0.4 million already. Yeah. Like that's mad. Like you needed to make that move. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think as long Madness. as you're clear on who you want, then it's there. Yeah. Um, we should look at teams. Are you clear who you want? I I'm a little bit clearer now, yeah, and I think I'm going to have some fun. I mean, I think I was a bit nervous last night, but I think I'm going to have some fun this week. So, looking at my team, um, this is essentially the bus team from last week, and I've got six point three million in the bank because I sold Salah, one free transfer because I did that Salah to Foden move, 
Um, and so I've got Pickford in goal, Chilwell, Colwell, who was my, you know, a little bit nervous, you know, coming off yesterday, but Potch has cleared him, Seems said fine. everything's fine. You know, it's just whatever. It's probably just a, like an impact, a kick injury or something like that. They're just icing it up, making sure it's fine. Yeah. Udogi away at Burnley. Um, and then Mitoma is my guy that's, you know, on the chopping block at the moment. But I've got Bumo, Fernandez, Saka and Foden in midfield, which is nice. I don't mind having both of them because that could be a good game. Uh, and they both could score. And then I've yeah. got Haaland, captain. And then at the moment, I've got Archer in over Jao Pedro, Saliba, and Kabore all on the bench. So the decision I'm toying with is having some fun and going with Toma to Bowen just for one week and then moving them Bowen onto like Sterling or Madison the following week. You know, like money's not an object for me right now, so that's fine. Um, and I can, yeah, and I can figure that out later on. The thing that pisses me off about this is I have to hedge and I have to hedge one way or the other. So it's not, it's not like I can win here. So it's either Archer or Saliba and Archer hedges with Pickford, obviously, and Saliba <laughs> hedges with, with Bruno. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit shit. I don't really yeah. like it, but it's, it's probably better than the alternative, which is Jao Pedro. And we don't even know if he's going to start. I mean, Brighton lost last week. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. Bright, Brighton lost last week. So it's a big battle that. Right, Newcastle is going to be a big battle. That's going to be fun, and it's a, and it's at the Amex, so you know that could be you know Deserby may have to change things. I mean, bringing Ferguson in for Nciso when they play in two some completely different positions this is I don't know. Is it so it, many? It works. So many narratives though, isn't there already? Oh, of course, this week <laughs> in the that Brighton Newcastle one, you feel like whoever loses that is not in the champ, Champions League race, probably just that people will be claiming that's that's the that's the thing with international breaks you get two weeks of people making decisions about teams and that's how it'll run yeah but same on man united versus arsenal like these are potential title contenders um and you can see if whoever loses that suddenly everyone will be like well they're great and the other team are not they're, they're done um chelsea and spurs have had promising starts but if they don't win the games they should um yes then Immediately, you know, top four contenders suddenly will dwindle very much. So that's definitely the weird thing on Newcastle. It's a weird, that's definitely the weird thing on Newcastle because the City game would have been a season long plan. City away in the season long plan was probably a zero for them. Like Eddie Howe's, yeah. aren't, Eddie Howe's realistic. That's a zero. The Liverpool game was a three slash one. I think it's one they should have, they wanted to win, but would have accepted a point. Um, but because because they because lost and the, the way they lost and everything or, yeah the way that yeah, everything the, it's just the, it just creates the narrative is just going to build so big for these next two weeks yeah uh, look brighton are great going forward as well so they're going to create they're going to cause some problems um for sure but it's just mm -hmm. and mitoma's mitoma's going to be heavily involved in in that but you know i trust he's a hard loss isn't he? yeah he's, he's, a, hard he's, a, loss. he's a hard sell he's a different one well, mm. he's He's a hard sell in the fact that it's difficult, not as in he needs to go now. Um, so, yeah. He's, yeah, he's a difficult sell. But that's where I am at the moment. Um, and I think, yeah, I think uh, I think just punting one more week away from Sterling just to make it's, sure that... It's tough him punting away from Sterling, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's not, these, it's not the, ideal. Uh, these next five fixtures of... You know, so let's just assume if people are get a wild card in game week nine, but Forest, Bournemouth, Villa, Fulham, Burnley, like it is tough. It's tough to stay away from him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a challenge. And obviously he's got no, he's got no international football to worry about as well. And we're Thursday night recording. Bowen's likely to rise tonight. With your money in the bank, are you still going to let it go to tomorrow or do you think you might no, do it? Probably, I might do it tonight straight away just because I can't be asked to. I don't want to lose money for the, There's no point in losing money for the sake of it, right? Just because I have it. Because eventually I'll need it for something. So we, so we have the second question of that, because we talked about it earlier in the week. If Boeing comes in, is there any, any temptation on the armband? <laughs> no. <laughs> there isn't. I mean, I, I'd love to do it. I, I would really love to do it. Um, I, I think he's viable as a captaincy option if you want to go away from Haaland, but... Like Fulham are just so bad, man. They're they're proper shit. Yeah, proper and, and shit. Polina, no fucking centre backs. Like, no, like Polina has been heads turned. Like it's going to be horrific for yeah. Fulham at the weekend. They've got. I mean, 
like Haaland could legitimately score five goals, and the like I can't see Bowen doing that. Like a Haaland hat trick feels feels comfortable. And we still play this game for fun, like but like. There might be other pods where they're a little more serious in their world of it, but we we do the magical dreaming in our heads, and there's the dream in our head that there's a fifty pointer between Foden and Haaland, and they just keep passing back and forth to each other and score them all. Yeah, yeah. Like like you want to enjoy that. It's going to happen. Uh, I mean, well, I'm not saying it's going to happen. It might. It probably won't happen. Is what is what we will, I'll have to say. Yeah. But you know, just having Bowen is is good enough. I think. Just having big differential could easily could easily score enough that even if you do take him straight out, he's paid. Yeah, and it's Friday night. Get the points in the bag early. Nice little, nice little green arrow. Everyone's sitting on nothing, and I'm there sitting you're, on fifteen points. You're a ballsier man than me, mate. Yeah, you're a ballsier man than me. It's fun, and look, because as I say, I haven't got many other transfers that I really need to make. Xao Pedro's an issue. Fine, I can deal with that. Saliba after this is Everton, um, Spurs, and then Bournemouth. Fine, that's a that's a problem I can deal with further down the line. Kabore, whatever, who cares? Like I couldn't, couldn't give a shit about four million defenders um, when I've got eight fucking attackers. Archer, yeah, Archer, just bring him in, right? And just, just, yeah, it's another option for it. us now. And hint, hints today were that it starts. So yeah, let's go. So we'll see what happens. Let's move on to your team, mate. So. Keepers is a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> like Anana or Turner, it's it's just bad or bad. Um, I'm going to play Anana. Um, just you know, you can't back United over back in Forest. You just have to. Um, and um, then a stupid and Chilwell, Udogi, uh, Rashford, Foden, currently Matoma. Bruno Saka, so still got I got three in that game, the the last game of the game week as well, um, and then Harlan Cat with Jackson. Um, I've got Archer first on my bench and Saliba second on my bench, so I'm also benching Saliba, um, and just because I think like you know the upside of the stupid and you still got to play it, um, albeit do I expect a stupid to keep clean sheet? No, <laughs> no, I do not. Um, so Matoma will go. I've um, um denied a lot this week about uh, going back to Maddo or Sterling. Um, and, you know, I've seen a lot of things where the people have said, you know, like, if you want to go short term, Sterling's the one. If you want longer than past game week nine, then Maddo's the better one. I don't think people should necessarily think that way from it because we can just make another move, you know, to bring somebody else in after that. And I also, I like Maddo for the Arsenal and Liverpool games. I like them. Like I like Bruno this week. Like when you've got that kind of player, I kind of like him in these bigger games. Um, I like Maddo for, for Arsenal and Liverpool. Um, I've got no issue in that sense. So he's coming um, back in? Yeah, he is coming back in. So it is going to be Maddo. Um, I, I do question myself that if I wasn't a Tottenham fan, would it be the same way? And full disclosure, I don't think it would. Um, I don't think it would. But I, but you have to watch your team and you have to enjoy it. And I think that's fair, mate. And look, football fans, we're all football fans at the end of the day. If like when we make good decisions, we generally make good decisions. If a little bit of bias comes in in your mind, then fine. Who mm. cares? I mean, like you said, like we're here to have fun, we're here to play the game for fun as well. So watching your player and enjoying his performance and getting rewarded yeah. for that, you know, you don't, we don't, we don't like sitting here watching Arsenal and Chelsea assets do well. Like as much as no. it's good for our FPL teams, we don't like sitting there watching them do well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. And, and, and it gets me fully on, you know, Sterling would also mean fully tripled out on Chelsea. I was going to say, do you think Jackson being in there has also meant that it's you've gone little... to... It's like a cover, like you're feeling it's like... It's a you... little blanket. It's a little bit of a little blanket that can just hold up a little bit around here. Because you feel like, oh, if, if he <laughs> passes... my head If Raz passes to Jackson, you've gone, well, that's okay because I've got the goal. I feel like I feel like there's a good chance that even if Raz scores, I might still get the assist with Chilwell and, and Jackson. So I, I, won't, I won't hate it unbelievably. Yeah, I know I'm... I, I, uh, obviously, I know I'm exposed there. Um, But it's, it's... Yeah, it's a little bit. 
it's a little bit of a comfort blanket yeah. um, on it. But it is just a case of um, believing in Maddo, really, more than anything else. Nice. Nice. Well, we'd be remiss not to talk about wildcard, seeing as lots of people are talking about it. So let's bring up a random wildcard that I stuck together with a slight caveat. You told me to take someone out, and I was like, okay, yeah, fair enough. So, for the... Matt, who did I tell you to take out? <laughs> Callum Wilson. Callum Wilson. Well, it was just because you were let just me, like... Let me read this. Let me read the side. Let me read the side first. We'll get, to it. we'll get to it. When you sent me it, though, it was the last man on... on I was half... Because like, you, you did it on list view, and you put it right at the bottom, and I was like, he's got to the end of this. And he's got, I need to have some fun on the last one. I'm just going to stick that down. <laughs> So we've got... Uh, Tur- I might have taken it if you went Darwin. If you'd have gone Darwin, I'd have gone, yeah, okay, we'll do that. That's more that that's more a Game Week 9 one rather than a yeah. Game Week 4 one. That Because we know, hopefully we'll know more by then. That's interesting. Let's, let's bank that. Let's bank that note. Um, so for that. this wild card, just for everyone listening, so we've got Turner and Flecken. Uh, Flecken obviously being the main man there in Brentford. Rico Henry, Chilwell, Cash, Udogi and Trippier. Um, Trippy is an interesting one for me. Lots of narratives around Newcastle, Champions League, da 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 da. Hi, Hibbo. Um, Madison in the midfield, Eze, Sterling, Foden, and Bruno. And then Archer, Jackson, and Harland. Yes, Jackson came in for Callum Wilson um, <laughs> <laughs> the last minute. I just wanted to have a bit of fun with that last spot. I mean, yes, I'd have been exposed to. I mean, look, I've got that nice little cover of Sterling. Why not have some fun with Callum Wilson? Mm. Like, just. It's the same justification that you've used for game week four. If um, so, so we're obviously doing this. You're not, not catching any. You're not any rises. You're not convinced. No, I'm no, okay. <laughs> no, yeah, but we haven't caught any rises, have we, on this one? So, so a couple of things I, I was thinking about on this was if you hadn't caught the rise on Ariola, for example, would you would you pay the extra point one to have Ariola as a second keeper when you've got Flecken? Um, I'm just looking at how their fixtures change. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, y- you could do to be fair because you know when you want to stop using Flecken yeah. is probably game week ten, and then Ariola can come in then. Again, I mean, w- w- we'll see. I'm assuming that Fabianski is going to be like Europa keeper. I'm assuming. Yeah, I I'm expect assuming so. He's going to be Europa keeper. I expect uh, so. I probably would spend it, but only if it meant that I didn't have to compromise something else. It's just those Forest games early on, though. You've got Burnley, Brentford and Luton all at home. And yeah. for West Ham, it's just Sheffield United. And you've got the Sheffield United game is the, is the same week. because has got, got Forest in it. Like yeah. That. So that all, really... all three keepers have good games that weekend. So, yeah. Flecken has Forest, yeah. Ariola, Sheffield United. And then uh, Turner has Brent. Well, no, Turner has Brentford that week. That's not a good fixture. Yeah. So, yeah, you go at Ariola or, 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 or Flecken. So, so but, the, uh, but it... It's difficult. What you've had to do is you put the three in of Sterling, Foden and Madison, and then there's only so many spots you can have. So, you know, if you, if you, the basics for most people would be a sacker and a Man United midfielder. We've gone more out one here. I'm trying to recall actually, I've closed it down now. I think this had about three point something million in the bank. Three ish. Do I need to recreate oh, wait, you this? Had, you had all the money that to recreate it, but um so you could you, yeah it probably is about that because you could have Saka in this team instead of Eze yeah is what you've put in there yeah um but there's lots of fun to be had with it uh there's not still not enough in my mind that there's enough formed that would make me want to do it um I don't think you've been close so we probably haven't fully put our hearts into <laughs> into this as such well, not, um, not overly I mean I did sit, I did sit over it I did change a few things around but you know quite a few of the players I've already got in there and if you know as you say you can go so let, let, let's say you talk about the midfield right everyone's chasing around the midfield trying to do things with the midfield da 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 da, da. that midfield mm-hmm. if you put Saka in would be Madison Saka Sterling Foden, and Bruno everyone's got those five players anyway I know like I know the only difference is is obviously Bumo that's not in there I know. But, yeah, and that, that it, that's it. it. it everyone's got everyone's got people. Jackson. Everyone's got Harland. Everyone's got Udogi. Everyone's got Chilwell. Like, like, like it's hard. Isn't eight it? of the eight, nine, nine of these players you've already got in your team. Yeah. So then, basically, what a lot of people are doing is stashing Trippier. It's like, oh, okay. What I'll do is I'll beat you in a couple of weeks on Trippier, and you're like, yeah, but if I just come off one of my Man United midfielders, I've got loads of money, and I can just buy Trippier. <laughs> yeah, it's not difficult to get there. 
Um, and I'm still not convinced by Liverpool yet. No, no, but and and we're in transfer window land. Like the one I think could be really interesting with Liverpool. We've talked about on the podcast forever that you almost discounted the midfield three, didn't you? Like they didn't exist. Yeah. But they've not signed a six. Like they've gone through this season a window and not not an out and out six, you know, in in so not like a Fabinho's six almost type things is Endo likes to get in the opponent box. They've then signed Gravenberg today who who again, you know, I would consider him more to be a right sided eight than a than a six. Mm. But they've got subbers like there. So you could end up with you're probably gonna end up with Mac Endo or Grav and Sobers lie as a free and a real ball playing free. It's really exciting, you know, in terms of a midfield rebuild. Um, but we don't have no idea what that then means. No, like we don't, because because if the midfield can create, maybe they don't need the attacking fullbacks <laughs> that they did have to do that. They certainly don't need inversion from the fullbacks. Um, what's he planning there? We don't know how that then means, you know, in terms of they can feed in any way they like, as opposed to we always knew they used to massive balls from the right across the left and then eventually it would come back from the left and then it scored a mo. But it can go any which way it wants. You know, it, it could be really exciting, Liverpool, but it's going to take a few weeks to work out how. Yeah. And then we've got Europe and all the rest of the fun. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, yeah, it's it's a tough call wild card this week. I don't, I envy them because they'll probably have, you know, three three of those midfielders that everyone's looking at this week. Um, I mean, look, you can't but, you can't build a bad team at the moment on wild card, so there is going to nah. be there is going to be some some jealousy out there, of course. But just remember, the players that you have got is pretty much yeah. what they've got anyway. Yeah. And if you're in the upper echelons of the of the world already, then people are just moving towards your closer to your team Ten. anyway apart yeah. from maybe like a trips right yeah like you're already there you've already got sterling you've already got gusto for example and you can move off him you've already got jackson you know you've got these players yep so, so we're done. well we're basically done yeah so I just brought the hop on hop off fixtures from lego mane um go follow lego mane on twitter uh just to see if there's anything here that sort of stands out to you over the next few weeks I mean, the immediate thing that sticks out for me is the is the turn of the City fixtures. And that's not to say that yeah. I think City are going to have any issues across this period. But, you know, objectively, if you put that fixture run on any other team, it would be bad. Like bad, yeah. bad. <laughs> it would. It would. It would. It would. But I can see why at the moment lots of people are just having City defenders because they're just looking at it and thinking those next four could all be cleans. And I'm like, yep, yeah, could be. Could easily be. Um, uh, I love how I love how Sheffield United scoring in the last two minutes has just has just held off a few people there. Because otherwise, we're not that many though. It's still it's still gonna it's still gonna hurt when they clean on the weekend. We'll be fine. Um, we'll be fine. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Alvarez. Um, I mean, that that draw is not great. For, I think it's not great for Alvarez, the Champions League draw, because I can actually see Haaland getting a few rests. Um, because it's such an easy draw for Man City in the Champions League that potentially Alvarez just plays everything and maybe they rest the odd game for Alvarez in, in the league. That that would be a worry for me from Alvarez. Mm. Um, I think it's better for, I think it's a very good draw for Foden. Because I think there's then means that they'll probably just concentrate Foden on the league games. Um, so yeah, we don't fully know how it plays out exactly yet. Um, we tried to at... we tried to guess Pep last year though with the Haaland stuff, and you know we just have to wait and see. Yeah, it's tough with a lot of this. And the young lads, the young lads, Alvarez, yeah, Foden, is... and Haaland, they could just play every game. They should play sixty games. Yeah, they, yeah, they should be able to. Well, um, I wouldn't. That those next four are so good for Man City. I wouldn't put anyone off. Probably Alvarez actually this week though. Still, I wouldn't have him on wild card. I don't think. 
but um is this because people... they're playing is this because they're playing in Bolivia? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Twelve thousand feet, wherever it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Next day. Um but uh I still think hey, he could absolutely feast on the weekend, Alvarez. Um Yeah. The other obvious other the other obvious thing is, I mean, again, the Newcastle, the Newcastle thing. Um, obviously, I mean, obje- again, objectively, it's a pretty bad draw for them in the Champions League. <laughs> I'd say it's about as bad as it could have got, to be fair. About as bad as it could be. Um, so we 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 don't know we don't know what's going to happen. I think that's if we go back to your we don't know what we don't know type thing. Yeah. Um, someone said to me the other day, like Eddie Howe's the kind of manager that will focus on the league. I'm like, yeah, he's only ever managed in the league. So like, how the fuck are you supposed to know that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I love that Bournemouth. when people say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so is... we don't know that either. Um, again, trips thirty two, thirty three, whatever. And you know, look, they've str- they've strengthened as a squad. We know that that's a fact. Um, they've brought players in, so you're looking covering a number of positions. So there's clearly a there's clearly a need to do that. And whether that's like, you know, w- w- we get through the Champions League and then we rotate a bit so that players that we need get rests. You know, like trips could play like all twelve games in that in that period, and then. You know, take a couple of games off when they play Fulham and Luton and Nottingham Forest in seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and just rest his legs over Christmas and whatever. Yeah, it could it could be as simple as that. So we just don't know. A lot. As much as everyone's gonna, you know, probably go to the the Diaz's of 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 this world for the defence. When I look at the good fixtures, the certainly four and six, you know, really stand out on that one. But Anderson, who obviously, you know, we're, we're talking about points chasing you, was just banging them in, but. Those fixtures, four, six, eight of Wolves at home, Fulham at home, Forest at home, they're absolutely gold. Golden fixtures. I was I didn't um, even know where you were there. Palace, yeah. Down at Palace like on that one. If you want a cheap defender, like you're trying to get rid of like Gabrielle or something, you haven't got the money in the bank, I'd probably get I'd probably just go out at Anderson for the moment. I mean, even um, game week is it game weeks eleven to fifteen is pretty good. Maybe yeah, away games, but still. I think I would be more tempted to go. Anderson over um, Rico probably now. Um, I think last week, if you'd have asked me, I'd have gone Rico as as, as like the four point five option. Um, I'd be even tempted to say that maybe um, Anderson might be a better option than our boy Odogi, um, just because they're so good a fixture and their their defense is unbelievable. Like they're mm. averaging now rolling twelve game average is zero point eight xgc. Palace, and now they've got another keeper, so Johnston has to be on it. Yeah, um, I think that I think you know, if people need defenders this week, Anderson down at Palace is the one. We'll clip that. Other than, <laughs> other than that, Brighton look like you can see it. It's, this is the time to get off, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, you definitely. don't do it this week, you're then only one week away from, from Bournemouth, Bournemouth, and you think, oh, I'll just keep it one more. Yeah, no, you're you're right. This is this is the week. United away, was it Villa away, Liverpool at home, and then City mm. away, and then game week ten just come back. <laughs> just everyone just yeah. comes straight back. <laughs> that's what's going to happen because that 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 seven game stretch and their away game is Chelsea. So you know, there's there's always a bit of fire there. And and I know um I know Bourne, I know Bowen might seem like a one week punt to you, but he did very well against Man City last season. Um. And if he does very well and you do pick up an injury over the international break, it's not too far away to Sheffield United in game week seven. And there's not, look at, look at game week seven. Like, yeah, but got, you might not cap him this week, but you might cap him that week. Yeah, you could do. You could easily cap him in game week seven. Yeah, you're not capping, you're not captaining better, are you? Whatever his name is. Not Captain Iberto. <laughs> uh, so um, he's a genuine captain shout and go and seven. Fair enough. Well, we'll leave it on that bombshell, I think. Leave we'll, on that bombshell. We'll leave it on that bombshell. So yeah, that, that's that's what we're thinking then for game week four. Um, if you're enjoying the content that we do, make sure you hit the like button and hit subscribe if you want to see more. Our last review was the most watched review we've ever had. Um, so thank you very much to everyone there and thanks for all your comments in the chat as well uh, let us know in the chat what you're doing in terms of transfers this week are you taking a punt are you uh, are you on wild card let us know if there's any um, you know 50-50 decisions just drop them down 
And mm. if you want to come and join us on Discord, patreon.com forward slash above average FPL, uh, you know, that's obviously up to you. But the free stuff, like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff, we'd really appreciate if you did that. Anything else you want to no say? Me. No, me on Sunday. Um, uh, yeah, so. yeah, I was going to drop. I was going <laughs> to, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Bacon needs a rest. So I do uh, need a rest. So, yeah, so we'll be joined by Praz. So, Praz is going to step in on Sunday evening. I just messaged Praz. Praz, are you busy? It's like, never for you, boys. Never for you. So, a nice man. He is a good man and he loves to talk FPL. He loves to talk football. So, hopefully, hopefully, we get everyone in a good mood at the weekend as well. Us with a win over Burnley and hopefully United with a win over Arsenal. That would be, uh, that would be a dream scenario. That would be. They're playing on Sunday. We've not got a Monday game, have we? No Monday game. Yeah, so it's all done. Perfect. All done Sunday. Perfect. Well, mate, good luck for game week four and good luck everyone for game week four. Good luck, mate. Cheers, mate.